Hey team, we're going to learn how we can use CSS custom properties or CSS variables as you might know them by and how we can dynamically update them with JavaScript and React. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you hit subscribe and click that little notification bell for future updates. While you might be familiar with using CSS variables in something like SAS, custom properties are this actual native CSS implementation of being able to use variables right inside of the browser. In order to use these variables, we have three concepts where first of all, when you're actually defining your variable, you wanna prefix it with these two hyphens or dashes, or then you can name it whatever you want, where you would then set the value. You also need to define this on, a, on an element or a selector, where in this instance, this is the root. And you can also define them on actual selectors, such as this first paragraph here, but it's going to cascade and scope like you would typically expect inside of CSS. And finally, the third concept is to actually use these variables. You wanna use the CSS var function, which is going to allow you to pass in that variable name and grab that value just like you would expect from any other variable. Now, the cool thing about custom properties is not only can we use them as a typical variable, we can also use them in JavaScript where we can easily get the value and we can also set the value so we can dynamically update it depending on our application state. Now, in order to test this out, we're going to create a new React application that allows us to have some interactivity where we can easily see how we can both get and set these values based off of interactions inside of React. Now, particularly, we're going to use the tool called Create React App, which is going to allow us to actually really easily spin up a new application by using this simple line. Now, to get started, we can either run this command with npx, or in my case, I'm going to use yarn, so I'm going to run yarn create. React app, and I'm going to call this my custom properties. And once that is set, it's going to go through, it's going to clone down uh, an existing template that the React team actually maintains just as a default starting point, where then it's going to go ahead and install the dependencies, reset the Git process, and just give us a fresh start for creating a new React application. But once it's done, we can CD into that new directory and we can run yarn start or npm start. And it's going to go ahead and spin up a new development server. And if it's supported, it's even going to open that up in a new browser for you, where it's going to load that default application that we are talking about, where we can now get started with a React app. Now, when we open up this project and we actually look inside of app.js, we can see exactly where we have all the code that's creating that default application. And for our example, how about we update the color of this logo or the React logo so that we can see how custom properties work on the fly. Now, because we're actually loading this SVG file inside of the image tag, we can't actually target it with a color. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to inline this SVG file. And to do that, we have a real quick, simple step where we're going to open up this logo.svg file. I'm going to simply copy the contents of this, and I'm going to open back up my app.js, and I'm going to paste it right underneath. And we don't really need to make this look pretty because we don't really care about what's actually inside this right now. All we know is this SVG snippet is going to be our logo. And finally, what we want to do is we want to move this class name from that image onto the SVG file itself. But now once we look back inside of the browser, we can see that the logo still looks exactly the same, but now it's going to be an inline SVG file where we can now actually style it with CSS. Now, just as a side note, if you don't want to actually inline that SVG file, feel free to color this link or add some other kind of element where you're going to color, add the colors dynamically with the properties. Now, in order to actually color this SVG element, we can see that inside of the browser tab here, we have all the elements and we can't actually just simply go something like color red, as that's not actually going to target what we need to color. Now, instead, we wanna open up this SVG file where we originally see this G tag, where we have that fill, which is defining the color of that element. Now, again, we can't simply run color red, but instead what we're going to do is we're going to run fill red. And we can see that that immediately overrides that fill value where we can actually color it. So this is going to be how we're going to define that color that we're ultimately going to set up as a variable. So to start inside of app.css, I'm going to take this app logo selector and I'm going to add the G element at the end and I'm going to say fill red and we can already see that it's working perfectly. 
But now we want to make this a CSS variable. And typically when you create CSS variables, probably the best way to do this is by creating it globally. That way you can use it wherever you want, unless you're doing something a little bit more advanced, such as using that cascade to do something where it's going to dynamically apply depending on the scope of that particular style. So in our instance, we're going to open up the index.css file. And at the very top of the file, I'm going to define that root element where inside of that, we're gonna say, I'm gonna add a color of logo as my property name, and let's call this red to start off. Now, because this index.css file is actually loaded globally in the index.js file, we can now use this color anywhere inside of our CSS. So particularly back inside of app.css, I'm going to replace this red value where I'm gonna add the var function and I'm gonna say color logo. Now, once we look back inside of our application, we can see that we still have that fill, but now it's pointing to that variable of color logo. We can even see that if we want to change it back to the original blue like it was before, we can scroll down and we can find it on this link inside of the CSS or whatever other color we want to add. We can change that right on that variable. And once we go back, we can see that it's back to the, the original color. So at this point, we saw how we can create a custom property and how we can actually add it to an element. But now let's get into how we can actually use this to dynamically update this or get the values inside of JavaScript. To start off simple, let's actually learn how we can get the value dynamically. So to do that, I'm going to import the use effect hook from React, which is going to allow us to run client side code outside of the scope of the actual React rendering component. So inside of my app in above the return statement, I'm going to add that use effect where I'm ultimately going to grab that variable, but I'm only going to run it on the very first time. Now to start, let's define a new constant called color, and I'm going to use a function called get computed style, which is going to allow me to pass in an element to actually get the style where we can grab that value. And in particular, because we're defining this on the root, we want to get it from the root element. So I'm going to pass in document and I'm going to add document element, which is going to allow us to actually grab that value from the root object inside of our page. But now that we have that computed style, I'm going to add get property value. And inside, I'm going to pass in that name of color logo. And finally, to test this out, I'm going to go ahead and log that color value. So now, as soon as our page reloads, we can see that we're console logging out that exact color of our logo. We can even prove that this is working by changing it to something like orange, where now if we look back inside the browser, we can see that now we have to refresh the page because the use effect is only running on that first instance, but we can see now that the color is orange and it also console logged out orange for us. But for now, I'm gonna switch back to that original color. So next, not only do I wanna actually dynamically get that value, I wanna also dynamically set that value. To do this, I'm gonna go ahead and replace some of this code where I'm going to create a new paragraph tag and I'm going to add a button. I'm going to actually add two where the first one, let's call this orange and let's call the second one blue violet where every time one of these buttons is clicked, I wanna trigger an on event. So on click, I'm gonna say that I wanna fire a function and I'm going to fire a set color function that's going to be the value that I'm actually going to pass in. So in this instance, it's going to be orange. In this instance, it's going to be blue violet. Now, because we're defining this new set color function, I have to actually add it at the top. So we're gonna say set color and our argument is going to be a color where now inside we can actually set that color value. So like before, I wanna make this happen on my root element since this is where I'm defining it. So I'm going to grab this document, document element just like before this time I'm going to access the style property on that root element where I'm going to say I want to set my property and on that property I'm going to first pass in the property name and in this instance it's going to be color logo where then my second argument is I'm going to pass this color that I'm passing in as an argument to this function. But now we can see when the page reloads we have our two buttons for both orange and blue violet and when we click each of them it changes to the respective color. Now, this is a great simple example, but what if we wanted to change it dynamically based off of an actual input value? So to test this out, I'm going to use an input range where I'm gonna first define my paragraph above my SVG element, and I'm going to create a new input with a type, if I spell it right, with a type of range, where I'm going to name this size because we're going to dynamically change the size, where I'm going to set a minimum of zero and a max of 100. 
Now, if we look at the actual size of this SVG element, we can see that in our app.css file, we're currently set to 40 V min. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to also set this as a default value of our 40. We're finally, we wanna update this value anytime this value of the input changes. So we're going to add an on change handler and I'm going to call the function handle on size change and then finally close that input tag. Now, just like our set color function, we need to define that function. We're inside, we're going to wanna to grab the event and we're going to wanna to console log out and eventually use the event current targets value. And just to make sure our input works, we can see that it's already on the screen. And when we drag that, we can see that it's console logging out all those values. Now, similar to the set color, we wanna actually set a custom property and we don't actually have one yet for this variable. So inside, we wanna actually create a variable where the default value is going to be this 40 V min. So inside of index.cs, we're going to add another custom property called size logo, and we're gonna define that with the 40 V min. And back inside of app.css, similar to what we did with this color logo, we're gonna use the var function, but this time we're going to pass in our size logo. Now again, just to confirm that part's working, we can see we have our SVG file and we're currently defining the height with that size logo. But now back inside of app.js, we can grab that same line that we used for setting the property of our color, where we're going to use the document document element, where we're going to target the style property using the set property function method. And we're going to change this to size, where we'll then pass in this value instead of the color so that this is going to dynamically update this property for size logo anytime this function runs. And so once I remove this, I'm going to save it. So now if we go inside the application, we can try to move that and we can actually see that it's not working. And if we inspect this element like we did before, we can look at the SVG and we can click on the size logo to see the computed value. And we can see that it's getting updated, but it's not working because it doesn't have that prefix or postfix. And we can see that if I actually add that, it goes down to the correct size. So to fix this, we can go back inside this handle on size change function. And instead of passing this value as is, what we're going to do is we're going to use interpolation where we're going to pass in that value creating a new string but at the end we're going to also add that v min so now when i reload the page and i start to move this around we can see that it's dynamically updating whenever i move this range slider now finally as our last example what if i wanted to do something regarding the animation such as what if i wanted to make it so every time i click this logo it speeds up so to start off, we want to actually target this SVG with an on click handler. But because it's actually tricky to do that on SVG, what we're going to do is first wrap that with a paragraph tag, just like our other elements. And I'm going to add an on click handler right on that paragraph tag. And let's say on SVG click. And like all of our other functions, we want to actually define this as a function with the name. And because the way that we're going to handle this is we're going to use the timing and we're going to split it in half so that what it's going to do is take a smaller amount of time to actually rotate. We want to see what the current value of that is. and We're going to split it in half. So to start, let's actually define our variable. Now to start off inside of app.css, the way that we're going to handle this is we're going to take this timing of our animation property where we're going to say every time we click it, we want to split it in half. So we want this 20 seconds to actually be that variable. So the first thing we're going to do, just like all of our other variables, is I'm going to run the var function and I'm going to pass in the new variable name and we're going to call this timing logo. And just like all of our other properties, I'm going to define that timing logo and we're going to set it to 20 seconds. And now if we look inside the browser, we can see that it's still spinning and we can even see that on that definition, we have our animation, which is referring to that variable. Now to start off inside of the code to actually dynamically update this, the first thing we wanna do is get the current value. And to do that, we can use the same exact line that we used for getting the computed style of our color. I'm going to paste that in, but instead of getting the color, we wanna get the timing. I'm also going to replace the variable name for timing logo. Now, the only issue with this value is this is going to have that S on the end, similar to what we saw when we added the V min when we were setting the value of the size. So what we want to also do is add a replace at the end, where we're going to say we want to find that S and we're just going to simply strip it off. So next, we want to start to define the new timing. So I'm going to create a let variable and I'm going to call that new timing, which is super original. And I'm going to by default set it to that timing. 
Now what I can do is I can take this timing and I can say I want to set it equal to timing divided by two. But as you can imagine, as it gets smaller and smaller, it gets to be smaller fractions by smaller fractions. And that's not really helping. We really want to have like a reset point where at some point it's going to go back to the original value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if that new timing is under, let's say 0.5 seconds, or you can use whatever value we want, we're going to set the new timing as 20 seconds to revert it back to normal. Otherwise, we're going to use that new timing and actually split it in half. But then similar to how we set the color and the size, I'm going to grab that same kind of statement where we're going to say we want to define our property where we're going to set our timing logo this time. But instead of the event current target with Vmin, we're going to remove that and we're going to first replace it with our new timing value. So that's going to be the number that represents how many seconds. And then we're going to add the S at the end. So when it's done, it's going to say it's going to be the new timing in seconds with the S for the prefix for the actual value. But now when we head over to our browser, we can start clicking our logo and we can see that it'll start to spin up faster and it'll eventually get to a point where it's spinning incredibly super fast, maybe looks like a flower, but then it finally resets back to that original 20 seconds. Now doing things like changing the colors based off of buttons, changing the size and changing the speed are all just simple examples to show how we can easily use these custom properties to dynamically work with them from JavaScript. But what we can do is we can take these lessons and we can apply them to more advanced techniques to really add another level of interactivity and add a better experience for the people visiting our applications. Not only is it awesome that we finally have CSS variables in the browser as our custom properties, but we can use JavaScript to interact with these variables and do some very highly dynamic things. What's your favorite use case for interacting with CSS custom properties? Or what's your favorite feature? Or do you prefer SAS variables? What do you like better about them? Let me know in the comments. If you want to learn more about some cool things you can do with CSS, you can check out my video where I walk you through how to create a CSS only loading animation like you see on some of your favorite websites. Or if you do prefer SAS variables or like to use them alongside of your project along with custom properties, you can check out this video where I can show you how to export your SAS variables to JavaScript inside of a Next.js project. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that little bell icon for notifications and future updates. Thanks for watching.